Hi, Dr. Bruce L. Thiessen. I'm a psychologist. I'm also known as Dr. BLT, especially in musical circles, because I'm also a singer-songwriter. And I also do uh, rock therapy groups at, uh, at a prison. Um, I'm here today to respond to Ill Mind of Hobson 7, uh, the song and the video put out by Hobson. And uh, first I want to give credit uh, to Eminem, who has taken rap in a brand new direction, in a very creative direction, uh, one that is very poetic, very um, authentic, one that comes from the heart and delivers uh, poetry in a very emotional manner. So um, Hobson has taken this in a particular direction and uh, has applied this, this style of art to the phenomenon of God, and more specifically, I believe he's addressing religious abuse, I believe, based on the raw emotion that's expressed in this, in this video, uh, the anger, the rage, the confusion. I would say that he's been um, the victim of religious abuse. Uh, many of us have been, including myself. That's right, psychologists are not immune from abuse, from religious abuse. And I grew up in churches where they preached hellfire and brimstone, where they tried to make people feel ashamed, guilty, and terrible about being human, and tried to scare them into the kingdom of God. And uh, it creates a, a lifetime of emotional wreckage. And uh, so Hobson, in a very poetic ma manner, expresses this. So he's not only speaking from the bottom of his soul and from his heart, but he's also echoing the sentiment of a generation of adult children who have been abused by authoritarian religious re regimes which are fear-based. Now, fear and love can never coexist. The reason is um, they're mutually exclusive. You know, um, let's say that a, a man wants to get married to a young lady and he says, you know what, I really want to marry you. I love you with all my heart. And if you say no, you know, there's somebody that I have in mind that can chase you down and torture you for the rest of your life. Now, that woman uh, really has no choice, or what's called a Hobson's choice. She, she really has no real choice but to say yes. And once she enters into that commitment, she's entering into it on the basis of fear. And from that point onward, the relationship can only be defined not by love, but by fear. Now imagine uh, this scenario as it applies to God and his invitation to human beings to become, to enter a relationship with him. For him to suggest that the only way to enter the relationship um, is to either accept him and go to heaven or to uh, be thrown into an eternal pit of fire and to burn and be tormented for throughout etern eternity that would make him like the husband that I just talked about, only multiply that by infinity um, to get the, the sense of eternal torture. So someone entering into such a relationship does so on the basis of fear, because once hell is in the equation, the fear is always on the back of your mind, and that's the only basis upon which the relationship can now be entered into, and the only basis upon which it can be defined. So that type of relationship is a dysfunctional one, and I don't think that a loving God would invite people to be uh, become slaves of fear and enter into a relationship that's based on terror and fear. And uh, so I'm not sure why to bring up Jihad, who's representing uh, 917 Music Group. I don't know why he would want to uh, take Hobson's work and take Hobson and, and kind of dangle him over the flames of hell because what he's doing without maybe realizing it is for someone that suffers from religious trauma syndrome that's been well articulated by um, by uh, a number of psychologists including uh, Marlene Winnell most notably um, she talks about um, religious trauma syndrome which is sort of a post-traumatic stress disorder that is specific to one's religious upbringing um, basically, what um, Jihad is doing is dangling him over the flames. Basically, if uh, Hobson were to watch Jihad, you know, he would basically be watching somebody that who would want to trigger 
or maybe not intentionally, but someone that would trigger his uh, symptoms of religious trauma syndrome. And that's just a horrible thing to do. So I'm not sure why jihad would want to hang on to this fear-based idea and to use it against um, Hobson, which I believe is kind of like a modern-day King David. If you read the Psalms, you'll notice that uh, there are some parallels between the psalmist and um, Hobson in this particular song, Ill Mind of Hobson 7. There's some parallels also in the book of Job. There are many um, Old Testament characters who um, communicated to God in the way that Hobson communicates to God, or, or non-God, because he's kind of in an ambivalent state, or not, not knowing, searching. And uh, he's in a very odd, uh, honest state. Uh, of He's an agnostic in the song. And I, I think that the church, if individuals within the church were to be honest, there'd probably be a lot of agnostics within the church. And so I, I really uh, congratulate Hobson on being having the courage to come out and present, dare to be controversial and to introduce just the raw suffering that is representative of so many of us uh, who have been uh, raised in religiously abusive, oppressive, authoritarian environments. That's all I have to say for now. Once again, thumbs up to Eminem, thumbs up to Hobson. And uh, music uh, can have a healing effect, no matter what you've been through. I'm a big believer in music as a psychologist and a singer-songwriter. Um, thank you. Once again, I'm Dr. Bruce Altison, psychologist, also known as Dr. BLT. Thank you for listening to my critique.